Hello, fellow runners, and welcome back to the Running Amok podcast. I'm Heidi, and I'm joined by my incredible co-hosts, Meg and Romer. Today, we're diving into a topic that's the backbone of running. It is funny running stories. So <laughs> lace up those shoes because this episode is all about funny running stories. That you can probably relate to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who's going to go first? Romer, you got a good one? I got a good one. All right. Uh, for those of you that have ever been on a relay race like Ragnar, um, this one happens to be, we'll call it Ragnar Light. It's a peak to brew that's out of upstate New York. <clears throat> and it involves an individual who, for anonymity, we'll call him Norm, who is our invisible man of this story. So we were uh, in the middle of the race which is a gorgeous race. It started up at uh, Whiteface Mountain. Where's that? What state? Upstate New York. New York, okay. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous mountain. And so in the middle of the night, might have been 3 o'clock in the morning, we are at the exchange, and this um, Norm is finishing up his, his run. And he comes to the van, and the other runner takes off and goes about their run. And we are all like really tired and not really with it. I'm in the back seat and like right in, right next to the door. I call it the jump seat. You know, the slider mm. is right behind the slider is <clears throat> the, the, the one seat that we left in that area. Mm. Cause you get those big 15 passenger vans. You took all the seats out so you can put all your junk from the race in there. <laughs> yep. So mm. I'm sitting there and I'm like kind of conscious, but my eyes are closed and I'm only just aware of my surroundings. And then I don't think I could actually uh, answer somebody if they talked to me. It was that kind of hmm. tired. We're getting settled in and we hear the door shut. Me, almost fast asleep, think nothing of it. And the other, uh, the drivers, hears the door shut and they're like, all right, we're good to go. And we take off and drive down the eight miles to the next uh, exchange. And when we get there, I wake up and I'm looking around. I'm like, where's Norm? I'm looking like I'm looking under seats. <laughs> Did you leave him? I, yeah. <laughs> Poor Norm. <laughs> I, I, I thought he had crawled underneath one of the seats to take a nap because yeah, it, like there's space and stuff. It, yeah. Yeah. Not much. But yeah. I mean, I'm looking under bags and things. No, no sign Norm. of Norm. I'm like, oh, uh, oh, you guys. No. Where's Norm? <laughs> and uh, then we all look at each other in panic, like, oh, crap. We left him. <laughs> Poor so Norm. So we, it was my turn to run. So I had to grab my stuff and wait at the exchange. And they drove back to the other exchange mm. to go pick up uh, Norm. And, and what had happened was he closed the door so he could check off his box for the mm. run oh. that was behind the door. Oh, and yeah. drove the away. And drove while he was yeah. checking the box on so the side of the van. So he shuts the door. He goes to check off the box on the side of the van. For There's those like a of you, line of a marker down the side of the yeah. van. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the van just drives away. Oh. And he thought we were being assholes to him oh, and taking oh, off. And he's back. throwing the, the marker at us oh, and stuff no. and swearing. The other the other team saw what was going on. <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't know, with like a relay, what sometimes what people do is they'll put boxes for like the legs. Like they'll put like a checklist almost. They'll put like, for example, Meg, Heidi, Romer, and we each have like three squares next to our name if there's nine legs. And every time one is completed one run from each person you check it off on the side so that's what that's what romer is talking about <laughs> yeah it's a badge of honor oh yeah <laughs> and your kills like you, oh, yeah, everybody kills. that you pass you got to put it i check forgot about that yeah. and yeah. if you are killed that doesn't count it doesn't count no. only yeah. if you kill someone else yeah <laughs> not literally hopefully yeah. so uh, the one. other yeah. the other team that saw this happen went to you know they were going to give him a ride to the next exchange and they they passed each other halfway to the exchange. So then that van had to spin around and go back to the exchange to put mm. bring Norm back to 
that the, oh the other my exchange. god so he was on his way to you and yep. you went back on your way to him did he not have a phone with him it was no service yeah. oh right yeah. i've been mm-hmm. in those before yeah. where there's no service and it's the reach to, the beach yeah. was like that yeah. too not yeah. much service at all yeah same type mm-hmm. of terrain and mm-hmm. that was such a cool race to do um be uh, stories like that uh, yeah aside <laughs> uh there was this one road that you know i don't like to run in spooky places in the dark. Romer's no. always scared of everything. We have yeah. a great story about Romer. Oh my God, I should add that. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm adding it to my list for maybe the end. Oh, so you better stick around because there's a good ghost story with Romer, perhaps. <laughs> but there was this uh, back road and I knew looking at the map that there was uh, a lake on the right and there were just trees tall trees with no undergrowth Mm -hmm. so you could see straight Mm -hmm. into the woods but you couldn't see the sky even though it was like 12 o'clock at night anyways yeah and it was straight and went on forever there were no lights anywhere every once in a while i'd pass a house like every mile or so Uh and all i could hear was my gear like in my ears but it sounded like it was coming from the woods and every time I looked in the woods, I thought I was going to see uh, eyeballs oh, staring gosh. back at me. Oh, my God. And then it runs through my head like, oh, man, this mountain range is really known for UFOs. Oh, please. Like, oh, I'm going to get abducted by aliens. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to get attacked by a mountain lion cougar or whatever the heck oh, is out God. there. Gorged by a moose. Romer doesn't do well in the dark. No. <laughs> I'm fine if there's things around like civilization but dark not woods with noises either no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigfoot yeah it's bigfoot so i ran that one at uh get this effing uh, leg over with yep. speed <laughs> you're sore you're dying at the end you're like oh yeah <laughs> and this was want to run that fast this was run as an ultra relay mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, it's larger than Ragnar because it's ha- uh, the van one has four legs, whereas usually each van has three legs. Uh-huh. So we each had to do seven legs. That's and, a lot of times was, to start a run. Yeah, and it Whoa. was another 20 I think miles. Your pork chops are done. Probably. I hear the buzzer. Yeah, your pork chops are going off. You yeah, better go that's grab the those. oven actually shutting down. So okay. I could. Oh, so you're good. I I should take them out of the oven, but at least they're not going to turn. His into family's hockey gonna pucks. his family's gonna get home have bricks for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Slaps them on the table. Sorry, I was podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a pretty good story. I like that one. Yeah, but we call that the Invisible Man. I like that one. That's a great title. Yeah, Ragnar's always. Mm-hmm. Famous for stories. Oh, there's it a, really yeah. is. There's yeah. every Ragnar I've done is awesome stories to, yeah but that probably yeah. is the most memorable yeah <laughs> all right uh, who's next Heidi well I can think of one of my first running stories where I really got into running and running races there was one in oh it was a local race I can't remember where it was it was a 5k mm-hmm. but being being the mom I had to take the kids with me mm-hmm. I either I had two choices I could either not run or run and take the kids or find a babysitter or something. I just, I didn't have anyone to take care of the kids. So I brought the stroller, I brought the kids and there was a dirt parking lot before the race where everybody was gathering in and my kids were, were notorious for jumping in and out of the stroller all the time. So they're playing, it comes time for the race. They get in the race, I'm pushing them, they jump out of the race and now I'm pushing an empty stroller and it's an out and back, so I, I run out a mile and a half and come back, and it finishes up on a hill. And I get up to the top of the hill. We get back to the, the parking lot, and I put, like, clothes underneath the stroller, and it is chuck full of rocks. My boys just put in <laughs> and filled this stroller full of rocks. So right from the beginning, my kids helped me um uh, helped me train wow. better for races but <laughs> pushing an empty stroller with two kids that are fully capable of running they had to have been maybe five four. Oh my god um, they're, they're only a year and a half apart so they were pretty young yeah um yeah yeah so that's a good story um darn kids darn <laughs> kids putting rocks in yeah, strollers in strollers <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> all right yeah. So this one that I have is pretty good you know Heidi and I were talking before this started and like 
every good running story compilation probably should have a poop story. Oh. So that's what this one is for me. Don't worry, it's not graphic, <laughs> but it's mortifying. So as one does, I'm out for like a long run. You know, I think it was like maybe 10, 12 miles, nothing crazy, but this was like maybe three or four years ago, right when I started running. And I was out on this longer run and I got like halfway and I'm like, ooh, oh dear, this could be bad. I'm in like a very populated area. And I was like down the road from my dad's house and it's like pretty, pretty clustered with houses. Huh. But it's midday. So I'm like, I'm just going to see how far I can make it. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, I don't think I can make it much farther. <laughs> so I see there's like, okay, so there's a corner like this, like an intersection. And say this is the road like right here. This is like a corner of land that doesn't have a house. There's houses on this side of this street over here, this over here, this over here. So it's like houses all around in this little lot with no houses. And it's all trees, but it's winter. So there's no leaves. There's not much brush. And the trees, none of them are fat. They're all like the skinny little like trees. Were you wearing bright runner's clothing too? No, I, thank God. <laughs> oh, but my shoes were neon pink. So I think anyone could see those sticking out. But yeah, so I ran into there. And keep in mind, this is important. The road goes like this. I'm here. The road goes like this. A UPS man pulls in while I have my drawers down. <laughs> I'm behind this skinny stick of a tree. And as he drives by, I see him look and he makes eye contact with me the whole corner. He's like this. <laughs> like he follows me the whole corner. And I was just like, <laughs> and I just like froze like mid dropping a loaf in the middle of the woods. <laughs> like It was really, really bad. And then it gets worse. Don't wait. Um, so... As I pull my drawers up, I'm like, shit, that was really embarrassing. Like, that was mortifying. I head back down the road, which is this road that he turned down. And the next three miles, I go back and forth oh, with him no. as he pulls into driveways. <laughs> and every time I'm just like, and he keeps looking. Like, he'd drive by me and still do the same thing. And I was like, oh, my God, this man just saw me, like, shitting in the woods. And now I have to no, be humiliated geez. for the next 30 minutes as he passes me back and forth pulling in these driveways. Oh. Oh yeah, so that's my that's um great. my main poop story there. Jeez. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so maybe find a thicker tree next time. Yeah. 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 So wow. fun fact, after after eleven years of running, I have never had to poop in the woods. Oh, Not I've done even it so with many times. all yeah. my hiking. Always. What? Oh. Never pooped really? in the woods. Really? And you're the one that we made do the real and sometimes poop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. The irony, huh? I've, yeah. yeah. Wow. So there was this one time. Where you almost pooped in the woods. There's been several times I've almost <laughs> pooped. Uh, what runner hasn't? Remember the <laughs> mad pooper story a couple of years ago? The no. The woman that just kept going back to the same bush in somebody's front yard. <laughs> no, I've never heard camera. that. Yeah, I've, what? Yeah, I've I heard felt that. bad for Was her. she running? Yeah. Mm. And she just kept pooping in the same bush? Mm -hmm. Day after day. Why wouldn't she pick a new bush like every now and then? She probably thought she was safe. Mm -hmm. Only to find out it was on the ring camera and then every, it gets plastered all over <laughs> the national news. mortifying. But anyways, Aww. I was running through Webster one morning and it hit me. Like I had to go. And I was near Dippin's. Okay. And so I go into Dippin's and then there's a sign out of order. I'm like, oh, that is the worst. Because yeah. your body is ready mm -hmm. to go. And then your body is yeah. primed to like, let it out. Your, your mind is like, yeah. relief is yeah. here. Yeah. And then it's No relief not. to be yeah. found. But I I thought that maybe it was the the staff trying to keep the public out yeah. of the toilet because yeah. they didn't want to clean it or something. Because I've heard that rumor about mm -hmm. that place. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to take a chance. So you didn't I, say like, hey, lady, I'm about to blow. No, <laughs> I would have said that. <laughs> so uh, I continued down Main Street and I made it. And don't forget, this is five o'clock in the morning, maybe five thirty at this point. Nothing is open. I'm surprised Dippin's was open. Uh -huh. So I get, make it as far as the police department and I'm like. They've got to be open. What police department actually closes up? So I go in, not the door is open, not a soul to be seen. <laughs> but a bathroom. I, I, yeah. And I'm looking around for cameras. I'm like waving. I'm like, I just got to go <laughs> to the bathroom. Your hands are up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah. Then I, f I find the bathroom and um, destroyed it. And <laughs> walk back out and like thank you no oh <laughs> oh, that's mortifying so oh, that that's so that was bad. the morning wow. that the webster 
uh, police were right there when I needed them most. Yeah, and they were graced with a lovely morning <laughs> yeah. present. <laughs> and then uh, this past Tuesday, oh, got hit again. <gasps> were yep. you on a group run too? You were. Yep. Um... And then I was right on Main Street <laughs> again. <laughs> There's no place to hide. And one of those, you have to stop. And you let, gotta let it breathe. Reset. <gasps> yeah. yeah, I had to do that three times. Wow. The, you know, it's only a mile and a half. What from, have you been eating? I, I don't know. It, Something's throwing I, you off. These haven't days. had that issue in a while, actually. I'm wondering wow. if it's just Webster. Maybe it's just yeah. Webster. Something yeah. in the air. So, <laughs> um, Matt Hall, bless his soul, found me a porta potty that I almost missed. It was on a side road, and he's like, "Hey, Mike, 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 Mike," and he's like. <laughs> pointing and you blew up the pot it was a brand new porta potty. oh that's the best Ooh, though yeah. that's good yeah, for you they had just put it there yesterday wow. i looked at the note on the side yeah of it and like, that is straight from new, god not yeah. new anymore wow you had yes. good good karma so, playing on your side <clears throat> um yeah sorry people for about you know poop stories but yes. you... well, we, can, we can change the poop stories to yes. cave stories oh good that's even <laughs> better that's very stories. common with running yes. yeah my very first marathon my first full marathon was the Marine Corps Marathon, and I made a last-minute wardrobe change, which you should never do. Never. You should never, never try do. new things on race no. day. Nope. It was a last-minute change. Uh, I, I'll skip ahead to the finish where I uh, everything seemed to be fine until I got into the shower. Oh, my God. That is the worst feeling. Yeah. And I, I didn't know it was coming because it was my first yeah! marathon. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I got into the shower. I was... My sister lived in New York City at the time. Or not New York City, I'm sorry, uh, D.C., mm -hmm. where the Marine Corps Marathon is. And I got into her shower and I screamed. Mm -hmm. I was chafed in... in Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was chafed where it hurt really badly. Yeah. Not armpits. Yeah. Um, Mine's yeah. always the armpits. Every yeah. time it's a run over this, 15 this miles, my armpits. Privates. It was oh. the private area. Yeah. So the, yikes. that hurt. Yeah. Funny thing is that's yeah. how I found out the first time I chafed in, the, in shower. the shower. Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it, it was yeah, my it was... nipples because I wore a cotton shirt at the yeah. Charlton old, old home day race. Oh. Wow. That was my first big race. Mm -hmm. I did one 5k before that. But I just started running that May. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all I had was cotton running shirts. Yeah. And it rained that day. Oh. So and I didn't think anything of it. I ran the race. Yeah. It was, you know, oh. yeah. all fine and dandy. I get home, jump in a shower. It's like yeah. somebody took lighters. Oh, oh like, so bad. Yeah. yeah. That was My the worst thing. I had to ask if I was okay. Mm -hmm. But then every time I went to the bathroom after that, it, it hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it hurt bad. It yeah. Hurt so bad. So that was... Oh. That was an experience. I don't, I don't chafe anymore. No, though. no, not even armpits. Um, I might chafe like right here with really? my like, bicep going. Yeah. And then I, I wear a runner. Um, oh, the vest. My ultra vest. That and I always will, chafes chafe my up here, So I have to, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I wear the right um, yeah. t-shirts mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, well, there was one other time that I chafed. It was the virtual Boston Marathon mm -hmm. that I did in in uh, my hometown. I had a physical that Monday. Mm -hmm. So I think I ran on a Saturday and I had a physical that Monday and it was, it was warm that day. So I wore shorter shorts than mm -hmm. usual. So I had that chub rub. Oh yeah. So there was that, that I've had that actually. And it didn't, that didn't bother me. Not like, mm -hmm. not like the other chafing no. did, but it didn't bother me. But then I had a physical where my doctor <laughs> said to me, she's she like, said, are you Thank good? God that I know what you do and who yeah. you are and that I don't need to be concerned. That yeah. You're chafed in that <laughs> area. <laughs> But I, I looked down and I was like, oh. Oh, God. That yeah, that's painful. So. Mm -hmm. It definitely yeah. is. All right. Yeah. So I guess it's my turn now. And this isn't necessarily a story, but it kind of is. And there's like a song that goes along with it that I'd like to play. Oh because I, but anyways, I noticed I did this a couple years ago. I was doing an 18 mile run with my cousin Liv. And at mile nine, we kind of split up because we were both running like different paces. And I got to, like, mile 15, 16, and I got, like, really religious out of nowhere. Like, I was listening to rap music, like, full rap music, and it was this one particular song, Lift Me Up by Tyga. Oh. <laughs> and Heidi knows this song because I, I played yeah. this for her. And I was, like, praying, and the song is talking about young thotties with the big body and, like, Lift Me Up, Hallelujah. Like, it's like a strip 
strip club song. But for me, when I was like in my lowest of lows at mile 15, like going fast for what I was at then, like I was like, oh my God, please God, lift me up. And he's like <laughs> singing about the young thotties with the big bodies. And I'm like praying at the same time. But yeah, I can play a snippet of the song. I think some people may know this song. It's pretty popular. Let's see. I like I'll go song. to the chorus. It makes me think of you. It's this song. Yes, yes, Hang on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ready? Here it is. Here it is. Ready? <laughs> Half a meal posted in the Bel Air lobby. <laughs> yeah, and then I get really religious when I uh, hear that song. So highly recommend for anyone who's really struggling through a run, pop that on. You really feel close to God. Yeah. 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 Or you could run an ultra yeah. marathon. That's yes. That's where I end up praying mm -hmm. a lot. And yeah. Hallucinating. Yes. And hallucinating. <laughs> hallucinating. Yeah. Heidi's probably got oh, some good man. hallucinating yeah. stories. Uh, the yeah. two ultras that I've run, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't actually hallucinate. Oh. You gotta That's run kinda, further. Yeah. yeah. Longer. Yeah. Yeah. Further. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've done um I've done a total of I think thirteen marathons and ultra marathons. I think maybe eight ultra marathons. I'm not sure. The longest the longest I attempt, I was attempting 100 miles, and I made it to 92. That's really so, crazy still. Uh, and I was pulled off the course at 92 because I missed my cutoff by 25 minutes, I think. So, um, But that hurt. That hurt. But when, when you, you reach a certain point where it's no more, it's no longer about running. It's about um, the mental capacity yeah, it's a mental that game. you have. Mm. Yeah. So you, you do reach a point where I start going, hallelujah. Yeah, <laughs> this is fantastic. I love running. My life yeah. is fantastic. And then you can hit that wall like immediately. Mm -hmm. You'll be running and all of a sudden you're like, ah. um, I think your family's home. Yeah. Yeah. Can you shut that off? <laughs> Problem okay. solved. Problem cool. averted. <clears throat> so yeah, sometimes you hear things while you're running. Now for me, it was uh, the, with the ultra marathon. It was... Um, yeah, the highs and the lows, mm -hmm. the roller coaster, and then you realize that your low isn't gonna stay there. And I guess that's a metaphor for life. Yeah, that, you know, you're you're in a low and just keep pushing through it, and then yeah. you'll get to the high again. And your high's yes. not gonna last all that long either. But mm -hmm. there is a lot. I know for me, uh, well, this isn't funny, I suppose, but when I start thinking about giving up running and taking up knitting. <laughs> I need to get that out of my mind because I can't knit. I don't want to knit. I don't have any interest As I just in take up sewing. Yeah. I just I don't have any I interest in doing that. So. <laughs> That's when I know I'm like, no, no, quiet the noise, get that rid of that. But my hallucination that I have, which is really strange, and I've had it multiple times. I, I do the same ultra every year, but I am um at the end of the ultra, truth be told, not a lot of people run. Mm -hmm. It may appear well, to us we're running, but you're shuffling. You're Except shuffling for along. Junior, who oh, some jumps, do. jumps yes. two feet oh, off the ground. Absolutely. Some people can run right through it. But, um, you know, the, the mere mortal folk that aren't, <laughs> you know, freaks of nature uh, will shuffle along. And that's the point where you start hallucinating and doing things. And I always hallucinate that I'm walking up my road to my childhood home. And the my neighbor's house is on the side and mine is right around the corner over here. And as soon if I just go a little bit further, I'll be home. And I've had That's that so three, years, three years in a row where I'm just looking around. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm almost home. And that's so crazy yeah. i wonder what that's yeah. about yeah It'd be interesting to like have psychology on specific yeah. hallucinations with running like, yeah i wonder if anyone's ever looked at that probably and there's been people that have seen unicorns and yeah people see know, like unicorns like... and random people playing guitars <laughs> yes. and yes. yeah 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 Romer just sees ghosts. That leads yes. us into a good Romer ghost story. Yeah. So we run at times at like 4.30, 4.45 a.m. And we run through a cemetery at like mile two, probably two or three. Mm -hmm. And it's like set back from the road, really quiet. It's like the front of it's a big field. And then the back kind of goes up a little. And then it's all the headstones. And we run right through a part that's just like all headstones. And then like you go left and there's like, Every time we turn left, Romer always has to point out there's an old well in the woods. I was Does just anyone... about to interrupt you to tell you about the old well. <laughs> the old well. And I think he is like, I don't know if he has some sort of dementia, but he forgets <laughs> that he tells us about the old well every time. So we run through and he goes, 
do you know there's an old well in the woods back there? It's on we the woods. It's right in the middle of the field. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. So you're not even paying attention. Though. This <laughs> is why I have yes. to keep telling yes. you. It's dark. I don't so even it's know where it is. Somewhere. It's yeah. out <laughs> around me somewhere. And then one yeah. time we were running through, and I remember there was like a noise, and then I hear Romer, ah! and he like jumps near oh, someone else. Always, he's very, don't remember. Yes. very nervous oh, with the with the woods. But yeah, he like noises that we don't hear. Yeah, <laughs> what is that? Romer like, likes to stay close. Know. Like the oh, the other morning, we were running behind like this place called the public house, and Romer goes, "Oh my god, do you hear those coyotes?" And then we stop to listen. It's Two geese. Seconds later, it's, it's all geese. geese. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you hear the coyotes? <laughs> it wasn't like that. <laughs> Not that dramatic, but pretty yes. close. I'm like, is that coyotes? Yeah, yeah it's more like Two that. Like, we're all like, no, that's geese. Yeah. And there's the abandoned garage that oh, we yeah. went into, too. Rome was oh, like, yeah. maybe we shouldn't be in yeah, here. Like, Come on, let's go. Yeah. Let's check Katie it out. and I drag Romer into a, an abandoned place. If there's place anything on the side that's haunted on that road, it's that garage. Yeah, it yeah. would be, it was actually. Cool, though. Yeah. It was cool, but it was creepy, but. Rumor is definitely the skittish one of the group. <laughs> my my imagination runs wild in yeah. places like that. Yeah. So I say more haunted houses and teach you how to poop in the woods. Yeah. Oh, God. I, know I don't to. know what. I just it... don't want to. I will make you. It's yes. actually enjoyable. Bring some toilet paper. If you're nope. not making eye contact with the UPS man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So um, one of the most gorgeous bathrooms I've ever gone in was on the White Mountains. Mm. And it was... Oh, I forget what mountain it was, but we were on our way down and it was all like moss and stuff. So mm-hmm. we went around this rock ledge and everything was so green and it kind of looked out over, you know, a drop into even more green woods. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just sitting there, number one in, and number, looking number like. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> peeing. Like, this is the most beautiful spot that I've ever done this in. Yeah. <laughs> So much so that I wow. recommended it to the person, yes. one of the people I was oh uh, hiking with. Hey, you gotta with. pee over I'm there. Like, Dude, you, you, you gotta go up there yeah. and use that bathroom. That's so my mo- goal in life, is to pee in the woods. And, and yeah. of course, yeah. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, the, uh, of course, I have to squat. Yeah. Just stand there, so. <laughs> the, yeah. The yeah. universal sound for somebody is coming is, caca, caca. So <laughs> there were people coming up the road, the, 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 the trail, and I'm doing that while the other person's I've enjoying I've never made bath. that noise in my life well if you hear it yeah. it's because somebody sees you coming and is trying oh. to warn their really friends. someone's yeah. coming yeah. really yeah. god i just probably would stay squatting there yeah i'd be, I'd be like what is that crazy person doing <laughs> morning morning nice yeah. seeing you but <laughs> in the, the morning. mountains it's pretty common anyways mm-hmm. yeah that noise no no oh using in the woods. using the woods of course you're hiking yeah. where yeah, are you supposed to go that's yeah. the best part of hiking yeah it's fine i don't know about that the best part about hiking yeah, just be wherever you want you could yeah. yep it's really mm-hmm. liberating to pee in the yes. woods it really is yeah. it's where we're naturally from we are from earth earth is us we are earth so we might as well just pee <laughs> hallelujah yeah. <laughs> yeah. hallelujah <laughs> lift me up <laughs> great song why does this keep going back to the bathroom <laughs> yeah. no that's how running goes though i feel like it's a lot of um conversation that's not always typically appropriate mm-hmm. but that's okay because i feel like with running you get really comfortable with your body and yeah. that's probably why yeah. it's just a body function i don't think you're an official running group unless you have the conversation about poop yeah and it's not that hard and it's not like you have to yeah. be like hey you ever poop like that's no, not it how just it comes is. up it naturally just, it just happens like man i really have to go yeah. right now and then everyone's like eh, that sucks do you need us yeah. to stop like and that's every, how it is everybody the race has I did a poop this, story yeah mm-hmm. the race i did this weekend uh, I went to the bathroom first, but then we got in the corral, and then you have that last oh, minute, like, oh, no, oh, no I think I, have I need to, to go, and, and then I looked around, I'm like, I can't get out of here, we no. just packed, like, sardines in there, but luckily, there was a porta potty within the first mile. Wow, that's so nice. So, I stopped, I wasn't looking for any, breaking any time yeah. in this one, but I jumped in, there was still paper that's great in there and i thought oh boy this is gonna be a long run but yeah i took care of it things went well there you go off i go that's yeah. perfect one of the members yeah. of tri-state running they trained really hard to run this marathon and i think it was mile 16 if i remember correctly he stopped to use a porta potty oh. and when he walked out uh he stepped off the curb and broke his ankle Jesus. what and finished the marathon oh that's did he meet the time that he wanted? No. no. I wouldn't expect. Wow. 
and hopefully get those details correct. That's but... resilient. Oh, well, Desi, Desi Holy won moly. the Boston Marathon, by, and she stopped in a porta potty. Wow. Yeah. Right, the, Desi. the first Olympic marathon, the guy who like took a nap somewhere. Well, <laughs> one of them was poisoned with like rat poisoned? poison. Yeah. Really? Oh God, we need to look up our information They're on this. Probably still okay. faster than Hang me. On. Oh yeah. The, I'm sure you'll find a lot of information on that first Olympic marathon. Hmm. That's not a funny story either. No, that's like really bad. Yeah. Oh, the unbelievable yeah. true story of the 1904 marathon. Uh, um, won the winner after drinking rat poison. Huh. Wow. That is really crazy. He wins a gold medal after ingesting rat poison, stealing fruit, and outright cheating. <laughs> Apparently he cheated. A bitch. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, so sounds like that first Olympic marathon in 1904 was a little rough. It was in St. Louis, USA. There's another one. I forget the guy's name, but now there's a town named after him. We visited this place. It's the only reason I know this story. He forgot his shoes or lost his shoes before the marathon, so he went and found a couple of shoes in the trash, and one of them was like two sizes too small. And the other Jim was, Thorpe? Yes. Yeah, Jim Thorpe. Yeah, he won he, a gold medal in the U.S. on the morning of his decathlon event. His running shoes were stolen. Yeah, Using right. two mismatched shoes, including one taken from the garbage, he won gold. Yeah. There he is. Damn. That's Jim Thorpe for anyone needing that. Huh. It's a cool little town. It's like a uh, old railroad type of town, nestled in the mountains. So it's like you got a mountain, like kind of on each side of the town, and the train track mm. kind of goes through it. And this. Oh wow, that's really pretty, actually. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Hmm. Really nice. If you're mm. in the area, it's worth the trip. I New wouldn't England. drive out there from here just to go there, but. Mm -hmm. Cool. And there yeah. was a really cool like uh like mom and pop wine uh -huh. place i bought some more expensive wine i mean it wasn't super expensive but i was looking forward to enjoying it and the bag ripped about 20 feet from the car and smashed the bottle on the ground ah oh, rats yeah well so. that is unfortunate well do you think that's it for our stories today i think so i think that's it i think that wraps it up yeah yeah, so yeah. as you can see, lots of funny running stories oh, to share. Wait, you have what? to do the Truvy. Oh, yeah. Well, Romer is going to insert the real video here, but the sponsor of today's video is Truvy. Here's some more information on it. Just interrupting this program really quick here to say thank you to our sponsor of today's podcast, my own company. <laughs> it's Truvy LLC, an online English education school for people learning English as a second language. Make sure you check us out. All the links are in the bio. Truby helps anyone of any age learn English remotely over Zoom on your phone, computer, laptop, tablet, whatever is the easiest method. So if you know someone who needs to learn English, tell them about Truby. All right, that's it for today. Back to the podcast. Bye. All right. So who wants to do the outro? Have at it. All right. So thank you for joining us today. As always, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. We're going to try to get on some other platforms. We should probably work on that pretty soon. And figure tell out. us your stories. Yes, we would love to hear your stories. So comment them on the Instagram, the YouTube page. And thank you so much for watching us. We really appreciate the support. It's really fun. And here's to podcast number four. Yeah, we, we are officially over the national average. Over Whoa. the national yep. average yes. of I like to be podcasts. Than average. Yeah, we are above average now. Yes. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Today, we're diving into a topic that's the backbone of running. It's the Running Funny Stories episode. We're going to have to start over. We have to go get the pork chops. <laughs> Romer is baking pork, so he has intentionally interrupted this episode. Oh, the time. Good <laughs> lord. We got here early and um, still gonna get out of here late. <laughs> Fucking pork chops. Literally. I forgot my water bottle when I went to Miami. I was quite distraught. Quite distraught? Because <laughs> I love this like water bottle. Like you can't bottle. buy water anywhere else? Well, not with my special bottle. Look, I got all my stickers on mm -hmm. here. I have one for you. Oh, a Truby sticker. Whoa. I know. Right. Special for you.
Oh my god. In case anyone wants some, truby.org. If you need to learn English, you know who to call. I think the temperature actually went down. I'm gonna pull those pork chops out real yep. quick. Okay, pork chop chef time. Waiting for a break in the stories. Yep. Yes. <laughs> time to get the pork. Pork chop time. 